But the natural assumption to make is that if you go to court, you will actually get a better deal financially. Is that how it works? Uh, you don't get justice out of a court. What you get is a decision. And usually, I mean, put yourself in the position of the judge. The judge is hearing two very different stories. What's the judge going to do? Um, the judge has got to be fair to both people in front of him or her. Uh, so you're going to split the difference. You know, that's not, uh, that's not justice. It's a pragmatic decision. And to get there, you have to spend a huge amount of money. And a lot of that is, is a complete waste. I reckon that for most people, they lose a bedroom every time they go to court. And the court process is usually two or three hearings. So, I mean, you are hemorrhaging money. So try and avoid it if at all possible. How much is this process likely to cost? And is, is, is one process any cheaper than another? Uh, the cheapest way probably is to go to mediation because you don't have lawyers there. Um, you still need legal advice, but you can have that in the background. So it's a bit like getting onto a motorway. You can fill up before you go on with legal advice. You then go down two or three stops. And then once you've done, for example, you've got your financial disclosure out so everybody knows all the facts, you then consult your solicitor again and say, well, look, you know, what, give me some ideas. How, how are we going to shape this settlement? With those ideas, you then go into mediation again. I mean, I practice as a mediator as well. And it's actually helpful for people to have legal advice uh, and to come in with those ideas about where they want to go. But people are always slightly wary that they're going to get screwed somehow by the system. So that is, well, isn't that why you would have a solicitor? Sure. Uh, you need to know what your rights are. You need to know where you stand legally. But good, le good legal processes should empower the client. So it's very important for you, the client, to come into this process having done your homework, understanding as much as you can, read uh, divorce.co.uk, do as much information as you, get as much information as you can. That will help you ask the right questions. It's very important that you're in the driving seat, not your solicitor. Now, collaborative law is really good for that because you are sitting around the table with both lawyers and you're hearing the problems face to face. It's very important for your solicitor to hear what your spouse is saying as well. Uh, and that way you can just cut to the quick. You, you don't have to prepare for a court, for example, and all the papers that go with that. Most of, them never, most of them have never read. You spend money in court on papers that are never read. In the, around the collaborative table, you're just doing what is essential. Uh, and that is the best way to keep the, the cost down. So in terms of cheapness or most cost effectiveness, mediation is top followed by collaborative law, I would say. Lawyer-to-lawyer uh, -lawyer negotiation, if you, are, if you have a good solicitor who is genuinely committed to getting a solution, that will be okay. But if your solicitor isn't listening to you, and if your solicitor is recommending going to court, do question whether you've got the right guy. Give me some ballpark figures as to what I can expect to have to pay. Very, very difficult. It, so much depends on how much you're going to agree or disagree. If it's really, really straightforward uh, and say I'm doing a collaborative case, it may be over in two sessions. That may be £1,000, £2,000, something like that. But it really does depend. Uh, if you have very little to argue about, uh, I can do it in an hour or two hours. Uh, it just depends. That's why the more you can do yourself, the better it is, the cheaper the job will be. So I've got a client who's come to me uh, recently. She and her husband, they don't have children, have said, well, we think this is a roughly, roughly a good idea for us. We think this is a fair split. I will run through the divorce. I will draft a consent order for them. The whole thing will be over. I will never have anything more to do with it. It will cost, you know, a thousand pounds, fifteen hundred pounds really no more than that. But you're giving me the good news here. What about the worst case scenario, as often happens well, in divorce, where couples disagree and sure. continue to disagree? Uh, if people disagree, they are, they are hemorrhaging money. I mean, how long does it take to get people to agree? Uh, it, the, and the answer is sometimes never. Therefore, they have to go to a court and have a, an, a decision imposed on them. That can take months of legal work months and months of legal work, hanging around in court, traveling to court, instructing barristers, uh, tens of thousands of pounds. I mean, tens of thousands of pounds. But if a couple can actually uh, finalize a financial agreement, a legal agreement between themselves, to what extent does the court actually need to get involved? Uh, they don't have to get involved. Um, if a case is agreed, say you agree your finances, you don't have to go anywhere near a court thank God. 
but you do need to have a court order just to formalize what you agree. And there's a good reason for it. If you don't get that court order, your rights against each other remain open. So you may think you've sorted things out, but hey, two years later, somebody can come back and ask for more. So what you want is to have the court order say, this is it, this is what we're going to get. Everybody understands what they are going to receive, what they're going to pay, and there is complete clarity. No questions later. That's very important.